CFL Combine one-on-one -on -one with Montreal Alouettes head coach Jason Moss. You have a familiar quarterback in Montreal. It's not Trevor Harris. It's Cody Fajardo. Do you actually feel like in some ways that the Alouettes could be better off with Fajardo being younger and a dual threat guy? Well, I think that's a... Um you know, that's an assumption right there. I mean, uh, obviously, anytime you're looking at players younger, it usually is better. But, uh, you know, and being a dual threat quarterback obviously helps. But uh, obviously, they're both great quarterbacks. They both offer different things. And right now, we have Cody Fajardo, and we're all excited about it. And in free agency, Cody said that he had multiple suitors. So how did you feel to get his name on the dotted line? And what was the process? Yeah, I mean, I, well, obviously, we feel great about having him sign up with us. Um, you know, when it became you know, certain that Trevor was leaving and we identified players that we would like in the building. Cody was at yeah. the top of that list and, and talking to him, you know, you just wanted to make sure it was a fit in his mind as well. And once I spoke to him and um, I understood from his perspective that that was a possibility and he would enjoy that or welcome that, I felt really good about it because of the relationship we have built. And I think the opportunity for him being in Montreal, a clean slate, someone that's in his corner, you know, Danny did his due diligence, AC did their due diligence in looking at his film and identifying his strengths and understanding we can win with them. And um, I was excited because I already kind of knew that and, and knew what we were getting. So to get him to sign on the dotted line was a huge, huge thing. It sounded like Danny Machocha did all the film work on him on his own and you didn't necessarily push Cody on him. Is that yeah, right? I, exactly. I didn't want to because I, I would have been biased in that, you know, having dealt, uh, dealt with Cody over three years, two, two of the years playing and knowing kind of how the year looked on the, from everybody else's perspective other than someone that was coaching him from the inside and d knowing the things that he, the challenges he was dealing with on a day-to-day, week-to-week -day, -week basis, uh, mainly hit one of his injuries. Um, I knew, you know, that wasn't the best version of Cody that he, that he could show. Um, and I've seen him work and I've seen him do things. So, you know, I wanted someone else's perspective on looking at the film, even when, you know, outside looking in, it wasn't as good as what he, you know, anybody would want at times. You know, still Danny saw, Danny identified what I saw, which was a lot more positives than negatives and uh, things to work with and things that he could improve on. Like any quarterback, they can always improve on something. I just feel like we felt like the, the positivity of Cody far outweighed any negatives. Is Cody 100% now healed up on the Yes, net? and he, the thing, great thing about Cody is at the end of the year, you know, we chose to go with Mason and Saskatchewan over Cody, but Cody was as healthy as he'd been out, out the whole time at that point. So, you know, we were looking at, I'm looking at a guy that finished the year healthy and now he's had an extra year, uh, month, six weeks to prepare that he didn't have the previous year either. So I think we're all going to see the healthiest version of Cody, a guy that has a little chip on his shoulders, feeling very confident uh, and very good, particularly because of the relationship he and I have and the offenses we're looking at running with him, the things that we're looking at concepts wise, he has great familiarity with that. And so the experience factor over the last two years will help him this year tremendously. Did you think that there was any chance that Geno Lewis was going to re-sign in Montreal? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody did up to last second. I mean, Edmonton came in with an amazing offer and I think Geno at that point had made a decision to go elsewhere. And and I mean, talking with Danny, our offer was as good as, you know, as good as anything. Um, you know, that was, it, whenever you let it get to free agency, it comes out of your hands. It's the player's decision ultimately at the very end. It doesn't matter what kind of deal you show, how much interest you show, he has the right at that point to go somewhere else. And I think we all thought he would come back. We were all ex hoping that he'd come back and he chose to go another direction. And you got to, you know, tip your hat to him and wish him luck with that. But no, to answer your question, we all thought he would come back to the very end. Mm -hmm. Who would be your number one receiver right now? Right now, I mean, I, when I look at our roster, we're very young. I mean, that was one, one position that we definitely, I would say we're young. Um, you know, we identified, you know, different strengths and weaknesses of all of our guys. Um, you know, we've signed some very good receivers uh, in the States that are coming up. They're all going to be rookies. And then, you know, having Tyson and Kayon uh, coming back as big time Canadians that we're expecting a lot out of. Uh, to answer that question, when we signed Greg Ellingson, he's the one guy that I've worked with that's been rely or been tasked as a number one receiver in our offense, and he's always done a tremendous job. So I know even with his age coming in for us, he's going to do a lot of great things for us, leading our, our unit. Um, having the experience in the offense that we're running um, and then watching him play last year, particularly before he was injured, he was still Greg Ellingson. So, I mean, I, I would suspect that he's going to have a tremendous year. 
Um, but ultimately, what's going to be great about our guys, we're going to have a, hopefully an unselfish group that plays for one another, um, where we're not having to have um, a per se number one guy that we're having to rely on each and every week. It's going to be all of them that we rely on. There's a number one guy out there that's a free agent currently on both sides of the border. That's Brandon Zilstra. You obviously have a relationship with him. He had the best years of his CFL career in your offense. Have you had any communication with him? And could you see him coming I've, back to Canada? I, you know what? You know, I, I don't know if he'll come back to Canada or not. I know when we spoke when he left, and I've kept in t contact with Brandon just because, you know, having coached him, you establish a relationship with people. And I've always reached out to him every year just to say hi and hope he's doing well. And I'm well aware of his situation. Uh, whether he comes back up to Canada, you know, I'm one of those guys that's rooting for him to stay down there because I know the type of career he's had and the amount of money that is down in, in the NFL. And, um, you know, when you look at your uh, life, that's where you'd probably prefer to be. But if he ever came back up to the CFL, I know he'd have a ton of suitors and we'd be one of them, obviously. Um, you know, and you would expect by watching him play and do all those things. And when I have spoken to him in the past, he just feels he gets better and better every year. And I think when you're around in, down in the NFL for that many years, the NFL is super competitive. And so I know he's, in order to stick down there, you got to be that same way and improve. So um, obviously be very excited if he did come up here, but I hope he stays down there. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Jason. No problem. Yep. Appreciate you.